Hi, engineers. My name is Shanali. I'm an engineer at SparkShop, and we're back with even more questions for our friend, Dr. Eve L. Ewing. Who is one engineer or inventor that inspires you? You know, one engineer or inventor who inspires me is Dr. Kizmikia Corbett. Um, Her nickname is Kizzy Corbett, and she is the scientist who came up with the technology that helped us come out with the COVID vaccine. Um, And so she developed a new way to make vaccines, and she worked on it for many, many, many years. And when the time came, um, it helped the research to move so quickly to save so many people's lives. And I I really admire that um, and and happy and grateful for her work. My name is Katoritz. I go to school at McCutcheon Elementary School. My question is for Eve is, how long did it take to write this book? Thanks for your question, Katori. Oh, that's such a good question. So I think, let's see, it was probably about like three to four years between the time when I came up with the idea for the book and the time when the book actually came out, like a thing that you can hold in your hands. So the book came out in 2021 and I started first having the idea uh, in around like maybe 2016, 2017. And so it took me a long time to just write the story But another thing is that um, one of the exciting things about making a book is you get to work on a team. And so on the cover, you see my name as the writer, but the book also has an illustrator, Christine Almeida. Um, It also has an editor. That's the person who gives me feedback on the book. Um, And then there are people who use graphic design to arrange the way the cover is going to look, to arrange the type of font, the type of typography that we use inside the book, Um, the ways that the book looks on paper, like where the illustrations are versus where the pages are. Um, There's someone who's called the copy editor and that person, their only job is to find typos and mistakes. The copy editor is so detailed that they would even catch things like um, if I said um, that day was Saturday and I was feeling sad and so I watched TV and I hung out with Ralph and then the next day I went to school, the copy editor says, wait a minute, If it was Saturday, you wouldn't go to school the next day because that would be Sunday. And I would be like, oh my gosh, how did you even catch those details? And so there are so many people, even though you see, you know, only a couple names on the cover, it's a really big team effort um, to get the book from something that just lives in here to something that comes out on the computer to something you can actually hold in your hand takes a long time. Um, And I'm I'm glad it was worth all the time that it took uh, because I'm really proud of the final product. My name is Jaylani. I go to the preschool. My question for Eve is, what was your favorite part of writing this book? Hi, Jaylani. Thanks for your question. To be honest with you, this is my favorite part. I mean, I know that when you say writing the book, you're probably thinking like writing, writing. But to me, part of being a writer isn't just sitting down at a computer or at a notebook and coming up with ideas. Being a writer is also about being a person in the world. Being a writer is a job, right? In the same way being a bus driver is a job or being a librarian is a job or checking out groceries at the grocery store is a job. And I think that part of my job as a writer is to talk to people like you and so um, and and to, to thank you for reading the book, to hear what you thought of it and to incorporate your ideas on the next things that I want to write. And so um, this is the greatest part to be able to meet people and to hear that Maya's story resonated with you means a lot to me. It's the greatest thing. Hi, my name is Angelina. I go to Columbia Explorers Academy. Um, my question is, um, what helped you brainstorm the idea for the book? Angelina, it's so nice to meet you and thanks for your question. You know, I really like the way you phrased your question, which is what helped you brainstorm the idea for the book, because to to get a whole book, to write all those words on, on paper, it really requires a lot of, like you said, brainstorming. And in the book, Maya, just like all scientists, she tries things, she messes up, she learns from her mistakes, right? That's a big part of how science works. And that's a big part of how writing works too. And so um, it's not like I sat down at a computer one day and went and then was just done, right? I had to really come back to the project over and over. And some of the things that helped me were, um, one of the first things I did when I thought of the idea is um, I took out a notebook and I drew what I thought Ralph would look like. And, uh, you know, I drew his kind of like pot belly and his bucket head and his big eyes so that I could visualize him. Um, And I'm not a professional illustrator, but I wanted to be able to see him in my head as I wrote the story. And I also did a lot of research about robots. And so I watched a lot of videos about robots. I learned about different kinds of robots. I learned about 
the, the technology that we see um, that are the different parts of Ralph. I wanted to learn more about how different types of robots walk and move, for example. I learned a lot about that. And um, one of the other inspirations is, you know, when I was a kid, I used to really enjoy reading old issues of National Geographic magazine. And when I was about Maya's age was uh, when NASA uh, was first sending Mars rovers out into, into space. And I used to like to watch videos of how Mars robots, which Mars rovers, which are basically these robots, how they moved across the bumpy rocks. And, you know, the robots all alone in space, like it's on Mars. And so if something goes wrong, the robot is just like out of luck. And so I liked learning about how you build a robot that's so flexible in how it moves around that even with humans, you know, millions of miles away, that the robot is going to be fine without us. Um, and so, yeah, those are some of the, the ways that I brainstormed and came up with different ideas. My name is Amy. I go to McCutcheon Elementary School. And my question for Eve is, would you like to write more books about Maya and her robot? <laughs> Hi, Amy. Thanks for your question. You know, I would. I mean, I know that a lot of my favorite books um, are books that come in series, and maybe you also like series, and sometimes it can be fun to see a familiar character go into different unfamiliar new situations and see how they solve different problems and grow and change over time. But I don't know if I'll do that unless I come up with a really awesome idea. And I have a lot of other books that I'm also going to be working on for a while. So we'll see if I come up with a good idea for a Maya sequel, that'll happen. I also, you know, who knows, maybe someday there'll be Maya the movie or um, TV show. So that could happen too. We'll see. Hello, my name is Chloe. I go to St. Catherine St. Lucie School. When you were a kid, did you ever feel how Maya did? Hi, Chloe. I just want to say your hair is awesome. And I'm really grateful for your question. Yeah, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to write this book is because I think a lot of books are about kids having adventures and kids that are really brave and kids that are really strong and, you know, who know how to fix everything and do everything and be awesome. And I think that's cool. Like, I think that when I read those stories, I feel strong. I feel powerful. But sometimes in real life, I don't feel that way. And that's always the case, even when I was young. Sometimes you feel lonely. Sometimes you miss your friends. Sometimes you feel unsure if you can do something. And that's part of being alive. It's part of being a human. It's part of being a person. And so I really wanted to show a book where, um, you know, somebody experiences things that I felt in my life. And, and you know, one of the, the big things that my experiences is that somebody in her community lost their life to gun violence. And that's something that I've experienced in my community, in my family, um, and something that many of us in Chicago have experienced. Um, and similarly to Maya, um, there is a person in my family who lost their life to gun violence when, when I wasn't born yet. And so even though I didn't know them personally, I felt that their legacy impacted my life and what happened to them impacted my life. Similarly to how Maya never got to meet Christopher, but his life and the way his life ended impacts her. And so those are really complicated feelings um, that I didn't see uh, in a lot of stories. And so I wanted to, to represent that in the book. Also, um, the feeling of being embarrassed at school and crying, uh, that was definitely me. At least once a year, I cried in school. And that feeling like where your ears get really hot and your throat gets scratchy and you're like, oh my gosh, not today. I'm really going to cry. I'm really going to cry. I'm too old for this. This is embarrassing. Please don't let me cry. Oh my gosh, it's happening. I wish I could dig a hole in the ground and crawl into it and never come out. Yeah, that was me. Um, not all the time, but at least once a year, something would make me cry at school. And so to my fellow school criers, I see you. You're not alone. Uh, and I wanted to show that in a book. Hi, my name is um, Aiden and I'm from um, Columbia Explorers. And this is my question to you. Are you guys um, happy that um, um, your book is in a CPS um, school like ours? Aiden, nothing in the world. Like even if the sky opened up and it rained ice cream. Even if a million dollars fell through my ceiling right now, even if I got to go fly on the space shuttle or play for the bulls, nothing in the world could make me as happy as knowing that this book is in a CPS school like yours and that you read it and hopefully maybe liked it or at least didn't hate it. Uh, literally, it is my greatest dream come true. It means everything to me. And even though you and I may never get a chance to meet in real life, you should know that we are always connected because you shared a story with me. And that's the greatest thing that two people can share. And so it means so much to me. And I'm really, really grateful.